There is something every beginner must do when getting into FPV, and that's learn how to solder. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I would learn to solder if I had to start again. This video is part of a series on how to learn to build an FPV drone and is sponsored by SpeedyB, T-Motor and Flyfish RC. Before diving straight in and trying to wire up and solder your drone, you need to ensure that you have the right tools. The most important tool is a decent soldering iron and instead of going to the hardware store, I'd recommend going to your local FPV store and buying one from there. I use a TS100 and have found it to be absolutely perfect for my needs. I've also got some additional solder tips for that particular iron. I have three different tips that I use in my soldering iron. The eye tip, which is for the more finer work on 20 by 20 and whoop flight controllers, while the BC2 is my go-to for pretty much everything else except for soldering to the ESC. I found using the C4 tip to solder battery leads and motors to ESCs a lot easier and cleaner because it is bigger and holds the heat. There's also a tool called Helping Hands, which you can use to hold different items that you're soldering, but I don't use mine as often as I should. And what I found works for me is Bluetack. That just keeps things in place and does make soldering a lot easier. You'll also want to get some solder wick, tweezers, and I think two more essential items that you can't go without are of course flux and solder. A mistake beginners often make when buying solder and flux is getting plumbing solder. And if you use it, it's going to destroy all of your components. So you want to get solder specifically from an electronic store or an FPV store. I use 6040 leaded solder, which also contains a flux core, and that just makes soldering really, really easy. To wire up components, I use 26 gauge silicon hookup wire, and you can get it in a box or kit from Amazon or AliExpress. And this has come in handy on many occasions because sometimes the wires included with things like receivers or VTXs are not long enough for a build. The final thing you want to get is a soldering practice board. And this is the iFlight Blitz soldering practice board. There's also the Diatone Mamba practice board, and you can get these at most FPV stores, and they come in really handy for perfecting your craft. Now I'm going to step you through how to solder, and also share some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. When it comes to soldering FPV components, we're usually soldering wires to either a flight controller, or ESC, or video transmitter, or radio receiver. But no matter what you're doing, it's basically the same three-step process. Flux, tin, and flow. The first thing you want to do is secure your practice board to your bench to prevent it from moving and then apply a light amount of flux to the pads. Now it's time to solder. I set my TS100 to 400 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot, so you need to be relatively quick but also smooth. To tin the pad, touch the soldering iron on the pad and then feed the solder onto where the iron is touching the pad to form just a light covering. Then remove the solder and then the iron. You want to be in and out relatively quick, but also you need to be smooth. Now you want to repeat the process on all the different pads on the solder practice board. Remember, touch with the iron, feed the solder, remove the solder, and then remove the iron. You want to form a nice covering that's not too thin, not too thick, and it's just right. If you have a blob, that's too much. One thing I do regularly is clean my tip. When solder builds up on the tip of your iron, it can cause a number of issues, from bridge solder pads to flicking tiny blobs of solder onto your flight controller or ESC. Bridge pads and solder blobs can destroy your electronics really quickly, so you do need to be careful. One thing that I like to do is match the size of the tip on the soldering iron to the size of the pad on the practice board, the flight controller, or ESC. So for bigger pads, like where you would solder your motor wires to, I would use the C4 tip. For standard size pads, like on a flight controller or receiver, the BC2 tip works great. However, when it comes to working on smaller pads, like those on 20 by 20 flight controllers or whoop flight controllers, then the I tip is my go-to. After tinning the pads, it's time to prepare your wires. To solder wires to pads, we first need to expose some of the wire in order to tin it. I pinch at the top and use my fingernail to just pull away some of that silicon to expose the wire and it comes away quite easily. Now the amount of wire that you want to expose should be around the same size as the pad you're soldering to. If you end up exposing too much, don't worry. After you tin the wire, you can cut it back to size. After exposing the wire, I twist them and then dip them into flux to get them ready for tinning. To make it easier, I stick the wires onto the blue tack and like tinning pads, you want to be quick and smooth and follow the same process. Heat the wire, feed the solder, remove the solder, remove the iron. 
This should take no more than a second to do, and there should be a light covering of solder on the wire, and not a blob. For thicker and heavier wire, like battery leads, I use the C4 tip. And I do it in stages where I tin one side, and then the other side, and then get them all flowing together to make sure there is plenty of coverage. Now your wires are tinned, check to make sure that they're only as long as the pad you're soldering them to. And if you need to trim them a bit, now's your chance. If you solder wires that are too long, you're going to have excess wire hang over the pad, and this can easily bridge onto another pad, causing a short. Best case is your component just doesn't work, but the worst case, and most probable, is you're going to let out the magic smoke and destroy your flight controller, your receiver, or your ESC. So you want to make sure your wire tips are the perfect length. To solder the wires to the pads, I find using tweezers helps me hold the wire in the right place. You want to hold the wire to the tin pad and then apply the soldering iron to the wire and pad and move the iron just a little bit on the solder to allow the solder to flow and join them together. This process should take no more than a second or two for flight controllers and motor wires. But for your larger wires like battery leads to ESC, it may take a few more seconds. Just be mindful you are using a 400 degree soldering iron here, so time is of the essence. One key lesson is not to judge yourself on how your first attempts at soldering are. Because you're using a practice board, you can afford to make mistakes. And you're also gonna see yourself improve as you go through and learn to solder. Now, speaking of mistakes, that's where solder wick comes in very handy. If you use too much solder or bridge some pads together, then you can use solder wick to fix your mistakes. All you need to do is put the wick on the error, then apply your iron and remove the solder wick with the iron. And that's going to take away all that excess solder. And you want to make sure all the solder is cleaned. Now, I'm sure I've just made something that is quite difficult look really easy. Well, yes, I've been building quads for over three years and pretty much fix and build a quad almost every week. So practice does make perfect, which is why you have a solder practice board. You can do this over and over and over again and not actually destroy your expensive components. Now, if you're learning how to solder because you're planning on building a drone, awesome. But you're going to need to work out what are the right parts and tools for your build. So watch this video here to make sure you get all the right parts. But if you're ready to just go ahead and dive straight in and build your FPV drone, then watch this video here where I step you through how to do it yourself. I'm Darren Allett. Until next time, don't forget to send it.